Hello everyone, this is Chris Mackey and welcome to your first Ladybug Comfort Tools tutorial. Uh, this is just going to be an intro video that will sort of lay out uh, what, what the rest of the video series will cover. Um, and we'll be delving into this wonderful grasshopper and rhino interface uh, in, in the next videos. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to roll some teaser, teaser clips of some of the awesome stuff that we're going to be doing in this, in this series. Uh, and sort of explain sort of what the series is about and, and why I did it. Um, so to start off, so why comfort? And uh, and and so this is this is something that has been uh, in that has interested me for a long time, and it's something that a lot of architects and building scientists have known is a huge, potentially huge saver of of energy uh, and and make you know something that could really make a big dent in towards uh, towards reducing uh, energy use uh, in, in in the future. Um, uh, but the thing is, uh, and, and I've, well, I've tried to push for it in a lot of my, my design uh, projects over the past few years um, and, and sort of struggled with, with sort of using it in new creative ways uh, to, to, to try and either make people more comfortable and happy or to, to reduce energy. Um, but the thing is, as I, as I kept pushing hard into this, into this new realm of comfort, it became uh, uh, somewhat apparent that, uh, that I mean, it's hard to know exactly sometimes if things will work. And, uh, and this was the, the big criticism that I get in every architectural review, is that this is a great idea, but how, how do you know it works? Uh, and so, so I sort of have uh, I've developed these tools in response to this. Um, after, after working with what I found to be actually quite a large base of research and, and actually very wonderful tools that have been made so far, um, what I what I've basically done here is mostly just tried to bring them all together, all these wonderful tools that I've I've found and worked with over the last few years, uh, into one interface that you can find right and nicely in in uh, in Rhino and Grasshopper, um, so that they're accessible and you could you could use them to design very quickly uh, in in the in the time frame of your typical design projects. Um, and also the wonderful thing about having everything in our in our uh, Rhino Rhino interface is that it's uh, it's well it's very easy to make graphics then that can communicate and argue points uh, and explain why some strategies would work and 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 how things could still be comfortable um, uh, more more easily to uh, to a larger public and uh, and and the uh, and the clients that you might actually be working with on projects that that where you might be presenting such ideas. Um, so, so these tools are, I, I coded these tools together mostly from the efforts of, of other people uh, sort of that have been cobbled together and, uh, and they're open source. They, I built them all off of projects that had already been sort of open source or research that had been published openly. Um, and I did this, the reasons why I did this to, as open source is primarily for the purpose of, of, of education of, of you wonderful people that are watching this video. Um, because uh, because the thing is, I, I found as I struggled through this with myself that the tools that you have at your disposal are really only useful if you if you understand what's going on when when you when you run the tool when you run that that computational tool, and so you'll see me at a few points in this in the series actually delving a little bit into to actually show you what what some parts of the code are not to not to bore you with the you know intricacies of, of Python which I've written all these in, but more to just to give you a sense of actually what the what the mathematical calculations that are that are going on behind the scenes so that you. Can can actually understand and 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 use these in the in uh, the manner that that uh, that you'd want to argue your points about comfort. Um, and so the other wonderful thing about the the open source develop software development paradigm is that it's you know it's based off of a wonderful community of ladybug um, that's full of absolutely passionate people who have who have helped and contributed and and sort of made these tools fixed help report the bugs and and uh, and have made these tools the wonderful things that they're that they're becoming today um, and and it's because of this community that uh, that these tools are able to be what they are and and I am I'm absolutely uh, uh, you know we're, we are all indebted to them for for uh, for having these things here that I'm going to show you in the next few videos um, but the community is also there. I mean, they're they are a wonderful, giving, and passionate community, and they are there as I am to to always uh, help you with your with your issues that you may find, and use these components to your new and creative ends. And that is that is the other big reason why it is open source. 
So with, with that brief introduction, we're going to dive into the, the first four videos that, that follow this one are going to deal uh, specifically with some more fundamentals of exactly what, what, uh, what comfort models uh, I, have, I have put into, into Grasshopper and Ladybug here. Uh, and then the next few videos, there's going to be a many beyond this. There's, there's, I mean, this, the initial series will just have a few, but it's going to be a growing number of videos that will show you how to actually really apply these comfort models to, to design problems and, and use them towards your, your specific and creative ends. So with that, let us, let us begin, and we are, I'll see you in the next video.